it, it did shock me also. Uh, this was the, the first year that we had actually started breaking down for the custom coder market. And when I saw this slide, I, I had to call up uh, the consulting company that was doing all the research for us. And I questioned him on it. I said, really? And he said, yeah, they, that's what they are finding. And, and um, in North America by itself, um, there was over 6,000 that they had in, in just North America. And Welcome to episode eight. I'm Kim Scott, your host of the Powder Coder podcast, Ross Coats Powder Coder podcast, where we interview influencers and industry uh, and in the industry and cover trending topics so powder coders can effectively learn and grow their business. Today, we're talking about the state of our industry with someone who has their hands knee deep in it. Kevin Corson is the executive director of the Powder Coating Institute. He's here to share some insights and highlights from the recent annual meeting. I'd like to tease out from him some of the broader strokes from the data he presented in the hopes of giving you a bigger picture of our industry and what it may mean for you. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the show. Hi, Kim. Thank you for uh, inviting me. <laughs> so how long have you been working in the industry and how did you get started? Well, I've actually been in the paint industry for about 38 years now. Um, Long time ago, after I graduated from college with my engineering degree, I started working at one of the General Motors uh, assembly plants and it being just a plant engineer working on various projects. A boss came up to me after two years and said, Kevin, I got good news, giving you a 10% raise. And I was extremely happy with that. He said, but you're going third shift. You're going to be the maintenance supervisor in the paint shop. And that's how I was introduced to paint. Now, it was liquid paint. It wasn't powder back then that, that they had, but I, I learned a lot about the processes, about the equipment and, you know, what it took to maintain it. Um, so it was quite an education for two years. Uh, after that, uh, I came up to me and said, hey, Kevin, you know, you're an engineer and you're in paint. There's a new uh, plant we're building in Michigan. We would like you to transfer over there, give you a promotion, and you're going to install a new paint shop. And I went and took it, and it was, again, quite an education that we had put together and working with a group. Um, and I, so I learned how to, how, to, how to design, how to build, and, and manage putting it all in and starting it up. After that, the, the market wasn't as good in the automotive market, so I decided to, to change a little bit of direction, and I went to work for uh, one of the system houses uh, as a project manager and Worked at myself into a uh, general manager of sales and eventually became president of KMI Systems. So I've done a lot over the years. Um, just recently here in beginning of February, I started at the Powder Coating Institute as the executive director. Well, that's quite an exciting career. And I find that most of the people that have been into it as long as, you know, 30 plus years or more, 40, um, y'all kind of start in paint, um, liquid painting that is, and um, it all kind of happens with that and then it moves into powder. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, I think it depends uh, which which direction that you go into. I mean, I, I again, when I first started there, really that's when powder coating was really at its infancy, so it wasn't as much out there. Um, and the automotive had been primarily liquid, so that's where my experience came. Then when I, I came over and started in working in the systems houses, that's where I started learning about powder and, you know, both in, in just regular powder paint. I learned about powder porcelain enamel, um, but also did some liquid systems as well. So, you know, did, did multiple different types of systems depending on what the, the customer would wanted to install at the plant. So I, I had a very broad education on a lot of paint equipment. So PCI recently had their annual meeting on the state of powder coating. Uh, is there anything that stood out to you from the data um, that really intrigued you the most? Well, I think uh, on, on the overall market data that it was there, I, you know, when you see it globally, um, you know, the, the powder market itself is a little over $10.4 billion. Um, and, 
and it sounds like a huge number by itself. But when you compare it against all the other types of uh, coatings that are out there, whether it's uh, house paint, auto refinish, uh, trailers, uh, industrial market, you know, that type of thing, uh, it's only just a little under 7% of the overall coatings market. Um, the largest market itself out there is, is, is really the decorative, which is, is really the house paint, both external and, and internal. Uh, you know, that liquid paint type thing is the, the biggest market itself. So when you compare powder to just that, uh, it sounds like, you know, we're only a tiny little sliver. But when you compare the, uh, uh, the powder coating to other, you know, like industrial liquid coating, which is only about 8% of the market or wood liquid coating is 7%. So that's exactly the same as powder, um, but powder even exceeds the auto OEM, uh, uh, the original equipment suppliers or manufacturers uh, use of it. And the auto refinish is about 6%. So when you compare the powder to those other type markets, well, we have been growing over the years and have taken more and more of it. So it, it, is, uh, it is still a growing market. Yeah, I found that... Um Right off the cuff, I found that really intriguing and encouraging too. Now, in on slide eleven, uh, in 2019, North America and Europe had negative growth rates, and that was in the automotive production, flat construction market, and a flat manufacturing environment. Um, is what this slide is talking about. And I, I found that really intriguing because, you know, they were kind of saying that we were headed for a slowdown in late 2019, but no one really knew what the news articles were referencing. And really, uh, you can kind of say that powder was already giving us an indicator that uh, we were heading for a slowdown. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. And and what the, the slide there was just is, was working more on the annual basis, but it if you would have broken it down in, in the data that they had on the quarterly basis, you could see that at the beginning of 19, things were moving along pretty well, but it, it definitely tailed down at the end of 2019. So, you know, you could see that on a quarterly basis. So it, it, it was a pretty good indicator of, of things that were up and coming. Yeah, and just to kind of continue on to slide 12, uh, and I don't want to drill down too deep because, you know, some of the smaller coders like ourselves, we're not really experiencing too much of a slowdown locally. Um, I think that the larger coders are, you know, industrial coders and line coders and stuff. Those, they, they are probably the ones that are being affected more uh, on the um, higher points of the market, which they're just basically saying that um, we were down 1.5% um, and overall the year will be down anywhere from 5 to 15%, which is pretty much in line with what um, national uh, national projections are for, for America in general, for the economy. Correct. Yeah. It, it, and again, it, it, it it, it can be, you know, very by market. And in, like you said, some of the markets that you're in, you haven't seen as large of a hit, but in some of the markets that if you were dealing directly for an automotive uh, supplier as a tier one or a tier two, and that was the bulk of your work, they took a really big hit in quarter two this year um, because they had shut down all the assembly plants. Um, so they definitely took a larger hit than, than there, but the overall average, when you take them all into account, it's probably 10 to 15% down from the market. But again, some are doing better, some are not doing as well. So it really is a, how diversified you are or how tight you are to a single market. I think one of my favorite slides is slide 20, um, because it really starts to dig down deeper into the custom, the overall custom coder market. And I was shocked by this figure uh, on this slide when it basically said that globally there are over 42,000 custom powder coders out there. Uh, did that number shock you? It, it did shock me also. Uh, this was the, the first year that we had actually started breaking down for the custom coder market. And when I saw this slide, I, I had to call up uh, the consulting company that was doing all the research for us 
And I questioned him on it. I said, really? And he said, yeah, they, that's what they are finding. And, and um, in North America by itself, um, there was over 6,000 that they had in, in just North America. And, and even that number, you know, for just North America sounded quite large. Now, what they don't define is, is how large of a company it is. So that would include some of the very small uh, custom coder, uh, little job shops that are out there. Now they might only be coding a, a few wheels at a time, but I think they're included in those numbers. So sometimes that big number, you got to take a little bit with a grain of salt and, and this did not dive down or, or, you know, do a bigger breakdown into call it the, the size of the company. We hope to do that into next year to try and get a better picture of the various sizes of custom coders and, you know, how many there are in different markets and, and what the revenue in those markets would be. Yeah, and just to note that on this slide, the definition of a custom coder is a company that primarily custom coats. That is, it, and that's if they are manufacturing a part and then powder coating it, uh, that part for another client, they're not considered a custom coder. Um, so that, and they, on top of that, if they were to include those people, uh, that number would double uh, to the amount of custom uh, powder coders out there. That's extraordinary. Yeah, it, it is. It is a big number. Um, uh, and it, it's something, it, it just goes to show how, how large of a market it overall is. Even if you just break it down into the North America or the U.S., it, there is quite a, quite a big uh, group of, of those type companies out there. So, uh, anybody into that market or, you know, you may think you have competitors, but, you know, to say that you have 6,000 other ones, <laughs> it can be a little bit uh, leery, but it, again, it, we, we got to dig a little bit deeper into some of the numbers to break it down into size because there are some very large powder coders, but there's also some very small ones. So breaking that range is, is going to be our next step to try and get it a little bit better, meaningful data. Yeah, I think that's going to be great for us all. Um, and I really like slide 21 because the majority of custom coders are using stock colors. And that's like RALs, right? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just off the shelf. Uh, no, nothing special. And, and if, if you think really when you get into a lot of the custom coders, you know, they're, they're offering a slight to a bunch of companies or people, you know, if they want something done special. And they're not going to custom and get a, cup, a formulation because they're only spraying so small amount of it. Um, and I think that's where the stock colors are pretty much the, the standard wear for, for them to use. Yeah, now on the same slide, it says certifications play some role in the process. Are they talking about like PCI uh, ones only or just all kinds of certifications that are out there? No, there there are a number of uh, certifications that are out there. PCI is one of them uh, that that we have on the market. There are some others uh, that that can be done. And in fact, even some manufacturers have what they call their certification program. If you're coding a product directly for them, they may have their spec, and they'll come and even audit the the facility to make sure that you are meeting their uh, certification. So it can it can depend a little bit. Um, there's a lot of certification requirements out from the Department of Transportation in a lot of states. So, you know, you have to get a certification. One might be from PCI or it could be from one of the other uh, areas that they may have uh, in order to be able to coat and provide product to them. After this presentation was over, I started to think about what was presented on those slides and what it all meant for me, which is why I prompted to call you for an interview because I wanted to know, like with powder supplies um, and global supply chains at risk now um, regarding China and um, the economy right now facing all nations, not just some, but all, um, what does that mean for me as a powder coder, especially a small guy? Is it gonna be harder for me to get powder someday? Is pricing gonna go up? Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, it, I guess that can be always a, a potential issue that could occur of, of getting, and it may be a particular color because there is a raw material that might be coming from China. And there's a, you know, if it's a political dispute, there may be a short uh, 
uh, uh, break any action when while they're trying to solve it. Um, it could be also from shipping standpoints, uh, you know, how long it might take to be able to get some of those colors. It is an issue that's out there, um, but I still think overall the, the world has gotten smaller and, and everybody is, you know, has to sell to other people. So there may be some short term uh, as the politicians deal with issues, but overall we want to sell to China and China wants to sell to us. So that, that it still does everybody good to keep the commerce sort of speak flowing. Well, I agree with that. I, I hope it does mean that. And um, because in the end, people are just people, right? We all want to do and continue about our business. Um, so now the other part of this was I, that got me thinking was like this reshoring of manufacturing in the United States. I mean, with uh, potentialities of shortness in the market, um, what does this reshoring in of manufacturing? I don't even know if you can speak on it or if you know much about it. What does it all mean for for us here? If you know uh, and can comment on that. Well, we we definitely have seen a uh, number of companies coming in to do reshoring uh, and bringing manufacturing back to the states. Um, I think a lot has to do that. Uh, when they were a lot of these global companies were able to bring their money that they had over back into the states, they are doing more investment here. Um, some of the issues that you were talking about on you know, the global supply chain disruptions, they feel if they bring it back here, they have more control over it. So they're hedging their bet a little bit to to bring it here. So I I, I think it is going to be you're going to see more of a continue. Um, you know. Again, once we get through the pandemic side that we have here, that's put a little bit of pause on some things, but I think you'll see it pick back up again, um, bringing more manufacturing plants into the States. Well, that's good. I think, you know, I think it, it, I think it'll be positive for both the smaller guys growing bigger and maybe some of the other guys, um, you know, sharing some of those jobs for us. Now at Maui Powder Works, we've been a member of PCI since 2017, um, and we joined primarily because it's a late legislative body, uh, and because we felt that it was important for us to become part of a greater community of coders, as well as to uphold, you know, higher standards in the industry in terms of coding um, and what we're bringing about in our product line. Uh, but what is PCI and why should a custom coder, other custom coders become a member? Well, the Powder Coding Institute, I mean, it is it is a group of suppliers and users that have come together. Um, number one goal is that we want to, to grow the powder coating market itself. Um, but in doing so, we recognize that there's steps that have to go along with that to make sure it happens. One of them is educating the industry. You know, the PCI has a number of workshops and webinars. We work on standards. We have uh, events like the powder coating uh, week that uh, we put on, again, for education and, and where people can interact and network. We have our technical publications. We have the Powder Coating Tough magazine, which is exclusively um, published for the powder coating market itself. And a lot of it, good articles, learning new things, how to how to do some items there. Uh, we actually are working on the fifth edition of the powder coating handbook. It's in the final editorial revisions right now, and it looks like we'll be releasing it in in uh, early January next year. Um, and it's it you know upgraded with all the latest and greatest and new technologies that are out there. Sort of a one stop if you're a powder coater and you want to learn something or or find out uh, if you're having a problem, you can go to it as a handbook. So um, those are the big things that we want to work on from a PCI standpoint. The other thing we do is uh, we do have our certification program. Again, we talked a little bit about it uh, before, but it's really a quality program. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, the processes that are being used are being controlled and you're doing what you say you're going to do and have all the proper training and documentation. So you can uh, make sure you're very consistent going through it. But I think in, you know, for the end users that are certified, 
with the quality program, they, they do get uh, more consistent and better quality out. It does save them money in the long run because uh, they have less downtime um, and, and can produce more through the system itself. Yeah, and I think one of the most, or two of the most underrated things about PCI that maybe people know or don't know is even if you're not a member and you have a troubleshooting question or a or a problem uh, that you need help solving uh, in your powder line, uh, you actually you can actually write the PC, uh, PCI or the Powder Coding Institute write to you and you will actually help try to trouble, troubleshoot that problem for for that coder. Um, is that, that's true, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we do get inquiries in, you know, by email or there, there's actually a, a contact us on our website and we get things in. I actually received one today and it, it does come to me. So I, I'm the first person that looks at it. Um, it happened to be from an architect and he had an issue on how to, to do some touch up for powder coating product that was out in the field. And so, um, I was able to go out to some of our powder suppliers with the, this particular issue. I get back some uh, results from them. And then I send back and say, here, here's something that you can do. Just one little example of what we do. And, um, but you know, we, we get a number of them throughout the year. And I think the other underrated thing or the thing that I was shocked, I learned this at the custom coder forum when I went a couple of years ago, is that you actually have this thing called uh, peer groups. Um, and I, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I am. I'm one of the facilitators for, for one of the groups. So I am intimately involved with it. And that it, it really is, a uh, right now, uh, it, it's cold, uh, it's jointly sort of managed between the powder coating Institute and the chemical coders, uh, association. Um, but we have three groups. They're built of, of up to 10 um, companies, and we set them up so that they're non-competing. They're in different locations throughout the U.S., different markets, but they are all doing the one thing that's sort of common. They're, they're applying powder coating uh, to product. So with that in mind, we meet twice a year, typically at one of the, uh, uh, one of the, the companies hosts it. And the other individuals come in there and it's a it's two days we're at the plant. We actually do a, an audit. We walk around and then give and put it into a paint term. It's an unvarnished uh, uh, information back to the company and uh, of what they found. And it's meant to be informative and to help them improve. Uh, likewise, when you are one of those individuals that you go to the plant and you do the audit while you're walking around, you may see something that you really like and go, that's a great idea. I can take that and incorporate that back into my operation. Um, and the, the individuals that have been part of this find it very good, both um, you know, from a quality standpoint of learning new things, how to do it, but they also then, they, they come to know each other and trust each other so they can send out an email. I've got this kind of problem. Anybody experienced this before? And get some some information back from them. So it it is a very good program. Um, like I say, we have three groups right now. We are in the process of forming our fourth group. Uh, so we we hope to we have several in, in uh, that have expressed interest, and we hope to find uh, enough more that uh, starting sometime in 2021 we can get them another group going. Yeah, I was um, you know of course everybody was trying to get me on their group, and I think it wasn't because we were exceptional coders. It was just that we were in Hawaii uh, and people <laughs> got to fly out <laughs> and stay stay with us, I guess, and check out what we have. Uh, you know, so they were like, oh, no, you want to join my group. No, join my group. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, but I really felt like, wow, this is, uh, this is so much more than what I had anticipated as being a member of PCI know, was to have this opportunity to do that um, and um, and get to know uh, possibly other coders that have been in the game a little longer than I have or bigger than me. And how can I scale my business too? You know, it's uh, uh, it seemed intriguing to me, but also just, you know, having that shoulder to, to lean on or get 
uh, confident with, you know, if they're going to come and take a look at what I have, uh, you know, it, it kind of keeps you on your toes. Uh, but I think it's a great program that you guys need to maybe get out a little bit more because it, 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 it seems interesting to maybe be a member of that. Yeah, we've only we've only really been we've got two years of it under our belt. Uh, this would have been the third year, but we've had to cancel both meetings, the spring and the fall meetings, because of uh, the issues that we've had with the COVID uh, this year. So really, next year will be, I guess, a repeat. So we'll, we'll call it year three still. Um, so we are trying to grow it, and, and we are trying to figure out how we can get the word out to people. And and we appreciate you bringing it up because I think. With your podcast, again, it's just another way of getting the information out to people and maybe they'd get interested to be able to find out some more about it. Yeah. So now as executive director, I know this is a new role for you. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish uh, with PCI in the coming years? Or rather, what do you want uh, PCI to become in the future? Well, I guess as, as the executive director, I've, I've got a couple items that are, you know, number one and two on my list is is to grow the powder coating industry and increase membership for the, the powder coating institute. Um, but that's that's just the I think the ultimate goal. If we, if we provide the service, I think all that will will come with it. But we would like to, you know, I, I want to add and improve the education webinars, things like that. That you know, and, and like updating the the powder coating handbook. Again, getting that out to our uh, members so that they can use that to, to improve their their equipment and their system. Um, I would like to, as you mentioned before, the the peer group. We'd like to grow those uh, to to more uh, groups themselves because we really think it's important um, and it's a, a really nice thing for custom coders to do. Um, I'd like to increase the certifications, uh, both for the custom coders as well as the OEMs. We think that's a good quality program that's really specially made for the powder coating industry that uh, is, you know, probably very cost effective overall from a, a training and learning and making sure that you can do it. And and a lot of them use it from a marketing standpoint because they can say that they are certified and try and get additional business. Um, the other areas that I think uh, we're going to be doing some more work in and we started this year on is trying to develop more into the alternate uh, alternative substrates like wood and MDF or plastic and ceramics. I, we think powder coating can really grow into those markets, uh, which primarily have been done by in the liquid, um, but we can do it more efficiently. And then we've got a committee that's dedicated to right now that we're working on to develop some uh, technical data, some brochures and everything on that. The other area is uh, in the architectural market um, for all the architecture that's coded and all that. The specifying of that comes from architects. And we're trying to work right now with another association that specifically markets to those for developing specs. But they don't have any spec whatsoever to talk about powder coating. So as an industry, we're going to work on it and sort of hand it to them and say, insert this into your standards. And again, try and to get people to not only grow and choose powder, but also to do it right. Now, in 2021, in uh, February 23rd through the 26th, in Orlando, Florida, you guys are going to have your uh, custom coder forum. Uh, but incorporating in that is sort of uh, earlier on in the week, you guys have the coding workshops. They're powder coding 101 workshops. The basic, the basics is what this is called. And I went in 2018. I didn't go to the workshop. I kind of flew in as a presenter and just attended the custom coder forum. But I was amazed at how many people were actually in that room getting and learning that powder coding 101. Um, it, 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 I, it was full. Yeah, we we in uh, this past February um, we we had the the seventy five people that were in for that workshop alone, um, and it's a it's a two day workshop, and that runs concurrent uh, with the the custom coder forum. And again, there we have typically around forty to fifty custom coders, and there's a whole set of speakers and tracks that are dedicated to the custom uh, coder market and and companies. 
you know, and, and some of it is business, some of it is, you know, we had some roundtable discussions, and we also had some technical presentations. And and for 2021, we've got the program pretty well all set up, and and have some some great speakers coming in, and we're going to be talking about certification and peer groups. You know, again, just trying to educate those on there, but we have someone coming in to talk about automation for custom coders. We have uh, another individual that's going to be talking about troubleshooting and different ways uh, to do that and, and solve problems. Um, so we're trying to tack different areas and, and be uh, helpful and, and very meaningful for someone that's coming in there to spend their time uh, in there. After that, we do have uh, two days that follow, which is we call our technical conferences. And there we have papers on everything from batch coding to automation to new technologies. Um, so there, there's a lot of different uh, sessions that you can pick and choose which one you, you're interested in going to. And while that's going on, we do also have uh, um, a tabletop exhibits that the suppliers will be there. Um, I think we currently have like 74 suppliers. We'll hopefully gain a few more that are going to be coming in done during lunch hour where lunch is served right among there. So you can, you can eat and walk around and uh, talk and network and learn what's new uh, from, from the various suppliers. Or if you got a problem, go see a supplier and, and he'd be probably more than willing to help you out. I, yeah. I, if you think it's going to be boring, it's not. Uh, I was, I wasn't sure what to expect that first year I went and um, it was amazing. We had uh, one speaker was from Mighty Hook. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I was amazed that he had a solid hour of, and it wasn't boring at all. I mean, it went really fast and how he could talk about just hooks in, a, in, in an hour. I mean, he was a true expert. Uh, we're not sponsored by Mighty Hook today, just so you know, I'm not pumping, I'm pushing them in any way, but I was just floored at how much he could talk about hooks and all the different ways to use it. it you know, so it's cram packed. It's always exciting and new, and and you get to you know the you get to meet the owners of the companies that are there, like um, Stephen um, uh, from IFS, and um, you know, and they're and then they're not just sitting up on a pedestal in their group. They actually, you know, in the in the evenings, you know, you go to the bar or the lobby or whatever, and you. You get to have a personal conversation with them too. You know, it's not just that this, it, it's not cut and dry, I guess. Um, yeah. So and, I, I, and they're, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're always, uh, it, it, the, everyone that attends there, the, you do have the industry experts. So, I mean, if you, if you have some things or you want to learn some things, they're there. And, and believe me, most like myself, we all like to talk. So <laughs> if you come up to them, they'll share, they'll help, they'll, they'll do whatever you can. And, um, or, you know, come up to me and if someone's got a problem, I can point out someone that you should probably go see and talk to, but it, it, it is a, is it a great event? And, um, it's, it's well worth the time there. And, and I know it's a struggle for everybody to get out of their, their business to, to go to this, but, uh, believe me, it, it is worthwhile. Yeah. And the location, I mean, the Renaissance hotel there, that was a really nice, I was impressed. I, I really liked that hotel and it, um, it, a lot of, it seemed like a lot of the coders were going to meet their family later that week to go to, you know, Disney, Disney world and, uh, universal and sea world and stuff like that. So I think it's a great location to have that, uh, cause it can, you know, you can, yeah, it, it's, that's your brand individual. Like, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially like individuals like myself that come from the Midwest to have to go to Florida for a few days. It, it, it's pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, everybody was like, oh, don't leave, Kim. What do you mean you're not staying for the technical conference? And I'm like, oh, no, I got, I didn't know there was this other thing, <laughs> you know. So I just came in for the custom voter thing. But um, everybody was like, no, stay, stay with us, you know. So it was, uh, it seemed like I, I was kind of bummed, actually, that I had to leave. Uh, but um yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and I look forward to next year, too. So it sounds like it's it might be happening. If the world doesn't come to an end, it will happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, thanks for joining us today, Kevin. I, I, I really learned a lot about more about PCI, uh, especially with the 
uh, slides from the presentation. I, I thought it was it's very nice of you guys at PCI to share these uh, share this data with uh, others that um, may or may not be in PCI. And um, so, how can coders get a hold of you, like if they have questions? Probably the easiest way to get a hold of me would be uh, to just send me an email. It's Kevin at powdercoding.org. Um, otherwise, uh, on the website, there is the, the office number that, that you can always reach me through that also. That's great. We'd also like to thank our supportive followers and fellow powder coders out there. I hope you've learned something new about your powder coating business. Please comment, share, or follow us on this podcast. And if you have a topic that you would like to discuss, just email us at info at MauiPowderWorks.com.